Maybe you didn't get it right, but at least you guys thought you're thinking pi over 6, pi over 3, right? You know it wasn't pi over 4, but you're thinking between those, right? Nobody was thinking pi or pi halves. You guys know, ah, oh, it's either pi over 3 or pi over 6. I got to remember because everybody can switch them up once in a while, right? Get tricked up. So you got to be careful. But do you guys remember an angle? Do you guys remember an angle where it's equal to negative 2 thirds? Like, think of the unit circle. Is that, is that there? No. Now, is this a value on the unit circle? Well, yeah, I don't know. But I don't know all the va like, I don't know the coordinate point. Like, this could be a y value on the unit circle, but we don't really have enough information. So, to, rep to understand this as sine of theta equals the y coordinate is probably not the best idea. Because, obviously, think about it this way. If this was, well, actually, we don't know about that point on, as far as on the y coordinate. Because, again, in our thinking, Remember, guys, the unit circle is just made up of special right triangles. That means, if we're, remember, we're trying to find the angle here, right? It's a sine inverse, so we're trying to find the angle. The only angles are within our, um, our in multiples of 30, 45, and 60 degrees, right? So if we don't have a point within the unit circle that we're aware of, it's not going to be one of those angles. What that means is, if I needed to actually figure out this angle, I would have to use a calculator. Right? I'd actually have to type this in my calculator and see what it is. Now, fortunately for us, that's actually not what the question is asking. The question is not asking, what's this angle? It's really saying, what is the tangent of the inverse of that? So what that means is that helps us out. I can actually represent this not by always the y coordinate on the inner circle, but I can go back to day one. And I could say, well, this is opposite over hypotenuse. Right? Because that's what the unit circle is anyways, right? It's just y over the hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse is 1, correct? We just use the unit circle for, you know, to help us out. So let's go and sketch this graph. Now, we notice we have a negative here. And that was in your angles and constraints lesson. Man, this is a good question. It's highlighting a lot of things. So there's two angles here, or there's two triangles we could use. Neg now again, 3 can't be negative, right? Because that's the hypotenuse. But we can't use both triangles, guys. There's only one triangle. Now, if you guys remember in the lesson we did here, remember I would, I'd like give you this equation, and then I'd say cosecant is greater than 0, or like something else, right, to help you to identify the quadrant. Which, angle is the correct, which triangle is the correct one that we're going to have to use? Option A or option B? B, why? Well, you're doing the inverse, right? So you have to follow the constraints of sine inverse. So we're not going to worry about this one. So based on this information, I can construct a triangle. I can't find the value because I don't have a calculator. But I can construct a triangle that represents that. Can I now take the tangent of that representation? Sure. I just got to figure out what the adjacent side is, right? So let's just call that A. So I'll do 3 squared equals negative 2 squared plus A squared. 9 equals 4 plus a squared. 5 equals a squared. And then a equals, now I could write plus or minus square root of 5. But since we now know where this triangle is, we know that it's going to be positive square root of 5. So this answer is opposite over adjacent, negative 2 over square root of 5. Or as a simplified radical, like that. Okay. Now I'm getting short on time, but 